thank you for tuning in to this little bit more nerdy video um, it's not a how to episode it's how I do episode and also for the future I am gonna label uh, the thumbnail so it's easier for you to navigate because I cannot make uh, different feeds on YouTube and um, most ideal would of course be to have a separate channel but that's too much work so bonus episodes like this I still gonna throw them in uh, but I gonna label them like this because then it's easier for you to see that this is about navigation and if you're not interested in navigation you can skip videos like this Join me as I'm sailing around the world on Be Free, a Bavaria 55 cruiser. One of the biggest challenges for a solo sailor is to follow the maritime rules of keeping a sharp lookout at any time. This is of course almost impossible, as also we need to sleep, so planning our routes carefully is key. I'm not gonna spend time on route planning in this episode. This is more the next level already being out here sailing, trying to make things as safe and easy as possible, and how I use new technology in combination with old tools. The same tools I earlier used and still use for planning my route. The biggest challenge for a solo sailor is other ships, and especially fishing vessels. And of course with today's technology we have lots of tools like AIS and radar alarms. And we can even see ship details as long as it's within our range, meaning between 15 to 30 miles for most pleasure boats. For many years the limitation with a class B AIS to be visual on live maps was narrowed down to be within the range of our shore stations to pick up your signal. In most cases this meant being within approximately 25 nautical miles. This information would then be relayed via server to internet for anyone to enjoy on different applications like vessel finder, marine traffic and similar. Once you were offshore and outside the range, the main purpose was and still are there, live update between ships within your range for anti-collision as its main purpose. And for decades one of the biggest difference between a class A and a class B was that the class A also used satellites to relay their AIS information. However the very same satellites also picks up the class B signals, and this is what I'm going to share with you now. Not the tech how it works, but how I utilize this information with the tools I have on board. All tools in new wrapping could be a good description for this, if you have high speed Wi-Fi on board like Starlink. Not everyone is aware of this, but even a class B AIS transponder is being picked up by satellites. Meaning even B3 like any pleasure boat is visual not only 20 miles offshore or between ships, but even on live maps like this. To me this is a great tool being underway, as I can see the commercial traffic and fishing vessels further down my route. Meaning I can now have live update information that's beyond the old limitation of 25 to 30 miles. Which has been the main reason for my safety formula, only sleeping in 20 minutes intervals. With other words, I get a better understanding of the bigger picture. One hour delay in data means nothing in this perspective. And as you can see here in relation to my onward journey, the ships that's closest to me I will still never see, neither on my AIS or radar. Also there is zero conflicts ahead for the next 40 to 60 hours, meaning in theory I could go for sleep for 24 hours. Another valuable information several days ahead is fishing vessels. I'm not heading that direction, but if I was going south, this would definitely be something I would put into the equation and timing. Fishing vessels, and especially big fleets like this, is a nightmare for sailors in general. And for solo sailors, this is something you really want to try to stay far away from. Unfortunately there is no such thing as a perfect world, you can't trust this 100%, but still it can be a great add-on to your long distance navigation. 
The real life challenge is fishing vessels. Sadly there is lots of illegal fishing and of course they go dark with no active AIS. Even some controversial cargo ships and tankers that are not supposed to visit harbors due to politics or sanctions, yet they still do. Meaning some also goes dark in this category. And you will even see small sailboats that don't broadcast their position with AIS, which in my head is taking a huge risk. A small sailboat is sometimes difficult if not impossible to plot on a radar. So for what it's worth my advice is don't go blue water sailing without AIS transponder. Also some nations nowadays will not let you enter without MMSI number and a working AIS. Thank you so much for watching this slightly specialized uh, video and if you liked it please give it a thumbs up and even leave a comment below. And if you haven't already I would be very happy to see you subscribe to help me grow this channel. A special thanks to all my patrons that makes it possible for me to upload these videos. Much love from me on Be Free.